Hey guys, uh, I just wanted to uh, take this time and go through the lymphatic system. Um, for you guys, I call this one lymphatic system short and sweet um, because this is that chapter that you had to learn on your own and um, I'd kind of like to just go through it with you. So, a um, couple of just kind of generic terms that you need to know. A pathogen is any organism that can cause a disease. So, you know, lots of times if, if someone is ill or there's a disease somebody has, um, they don't really know whether it is caused by a bacteria, is it caused by a virus, is it caused by some kind of a parasite. So it's just a generic term that we use when we don't really know what is causing um, some kind of an illness. So that's pathogen. Um, this is the lymphatic system, and this is a system that nobody really knows much about. Everybody thinks you have a quote-unquote immune system, but you really don't. Your body's immunity is part of this lymphatic system, and the lymphatic system includes all the cells, all the tissues, all the organs that help keep you safe. It's all your body's defenses against any kind of a pathogen. Within the lymphatic system, there are lymphatic vessels, which are a lot like veins, and those lymphatic vessels are filled with lymph, which is a fluid that's it's real watery. I'll show you that in a minute. And then there are a bunch of different lymphatic organs um, that comprise this system as well. <clears throat> so if I were able to put your arteries and veins on this woman, you would see that, so arteries are usually represented as red, veins by blue. Your lymphatic vessels are always represented by green. And what you would find is these lymphatic vessels pretty closely follow the pathway of veins throughout your body. But you can see all along here, this, these lymphatic vessels are everywhere. And if you notice, there are little dots um, all over, especially here in the groin area. Um, here in your elbows, in your armpits. Those are lymph nodes um, around your knees here. And those lymph nodes are what are going to filter those pathogens out of your body. So let's say that, uh, you know, your heart's pumping. We know that there needs to be a certain amount of pressure when your heart pumps blood out. And that pressure helps move the blood through your body. But what that pressure also does is it helps move oxygen and nutrients out of capillaries into cells and then kind of by a suction action um, the uh, um, waste materials and carbon dioxide then will move their way into the capillaries go into the veins so it can be taken out of your body. Well if you've ever tried to take a sponge and squeeze it and then soak all that water back up you may have noticed that not all the water makes it back into the sponge. That area where you were wiping with the sponge is still wet. Same thing happens here. When your heart is pumping and that pressure is forcing oxygen and um, nutrients out of your bloodstream and into your cells, there's fluid, remember, in your blood, that plasma. Well, sometimes that fluid doesn't make it back into these capillaries. Well, you don't want that fluid to stay outside of your bloodstream. Um, one thing, it would decrease the amount of blood you have, and that would be bad. And another thing is, this is a warm, moist area. Any kind of a bacteria that was in there would start to uh, grow, and you'd have bacterial infections everywhere. So this green thing right here, this is a lymphatic capillary, and I say it's kind of like a shop vac. And so what this lymphatic capillary does is it sucks all of that fluid that didn't make it back into your capillaries. Um, it sucks it all up and eventually it'll take it and put it back into your circulatory system. But the lymphatic system is so nice, it doesn't want to give you back dirty fluid. It actually cleans the fluid all along this pathway. And so every time that that fluid goes through a lymph node, the lymph node takes pathogens out. Here's some more lymph nodes. Any more pathogens would be taken out and that sort of thing. So that's what your lymphatic system does. So functions, it produces, maintains, and distributes lymphocytes. And what lymphocytes are, it's just a fancy word for white blood cells. 
Now these lymphocytes are going to attack any kind of a pathogen or any organism um, that comes inside your body. Any abnormal cells you have, including cancer cells, um, any kind of foreign protein. So for instance, anybody that is getting infected with COVID-19 right now, there are proteins on the outside of those viral cells and uh, so there are lymphocytes that are going to fight those. Helps maintain blood volume. You don't want your blood volume to drop. It'll decrease pressure. Um, then lots of things can go bad. And then it helps keep what's called interstitial fluid concentrations level. What the heck are interstitial fluids? Well, remember how I said this green lymphatic shop vac sucks up all this extra fluid? Well, before it sucks up the fluid, any of the fluid that's trapped in here, that's called um, lymph. Um, once, or uh, I'm sorry, that is called interstitial fluid. Once it gets sucked up by the green shop vac, then it's called lymph. That's all that is. Now, <clears throat> I told you lymphocytes are white blood cells. There's three main classes of white blood cells. T cells, B cells, NK cells. So we'll start with T cells. T cells are named T cells because they are made in your thymus. They regulate what's called cell mediated immunity. When I talk about the lymphatic system and your body's defenses, I always think about the armed forces. So I think about T cells like the Marines, because when I think of the Marines, I think of the Marines are the first ones into any kind of a conflict. They like hand-to-hand -hand combat. They're going to go in. They're going to kill as many bad guys as they can, and then they're going to get out. Well, that's what T cells do. T cells will engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat, cell mediated immunity. In other words, these T cells produce all kinds of different toxins that will kill off pathogens. Now the second kind of white blood cell are B cells. They're called B because they're made in the bone marrow. Now they produce what's called antibody mediated immunity and in my mind they're the army because when I think of the army I think of guns. B cells don't do hand-to-hand -hand combat. B cells carry guns and those guns shoot antibodies. Their bullets are antibodies. They fight antigens. Antigens are the proteins on the cell membrane of any kind of a pathogen. So B cells are the army. T cells are the marines, first in, first out, hand in combat. B cells are the army. They follow the T cells and then they're going to shoot things with guns and bullets. And then you've got special forces, NK cells. They're called natural killers, and they do what's called immunological surveillance, meaning they are constantly traveling around your cells. They're very stealth. Okay, your body doesn't really know they're there. But they are just attacking anything they come in contact with that isn't supposed to be there, any kind of a foreign cell, any of your good cells that are infected by viruses, any cancer cells, and we all have cancerous cells. Everybody does. Um, most of the time, your body just destroys them. What destroys them? These NK cells. So um, I call those special forces because they're kind of stealth and they're doing this the whole time in your body. So what are the other main players in this lymphatic system? Well, you guys have all heard of tonsils. Um, and some of you may have had your tonsils out. You may have had your quote-unquote tonsils and adenoids out. Well, adenoids aren't really different. Adenoids are just one of the specific kinds of tonsils. You have, you have, you have three sets. You've got pharyngeal tonsils, palatine tonsils, and lingual tonsils. And your pharyngeal tonsils are the ones up inside your nose. They're also called adenoids. And in this day and age, the only reason you really have these out anymore is if you keep getting um, lots of infections, a lot of sinus infections. Strep throat is a big one. If you get strep throat a lot, um, what that means is your tonsils aren't doing the job they're supposed to be doing. They're actually doing more harm than good, and you would have them out. The kind of interesting thing is my generation we all had them out. We all had all of our, all three sets of our tonsils out. It was just something they did back then. Lymph nodes, you've all heard of. What are they? What do they do? Well, they're just masses of what we refer to as 
lymphoid tissue. In other words, it's just a mass of tissue that has a whole bunch of lymphocytes in it. Those T cells, B cells, NK cells, when they're not active, when they're not doing their job, that's where they hang out. They hang out in your lymph nodes. Um, they monitor and filter lymph. They remove antigens. And they initiate what's referred to as the immune response. So for instance, right now, anybody that had COVID-19, they're over it. Their body has built up an immunity to um, the antigens on those viruses. And so if they come in contact with somebody again that has COVID-19, their body is going to say, oh man, I had that once. I don't want it again. And your the cells inside your lymph nodes, they say, I got this. I'm going to go kill them off. And so that's what the immune response is. Your thymus is another one of these players. It is right behind your sternum. This is, again, where the T cells are produced. So when you were born, you um, babies don't really have a developed immune system. And as soon as you're born, your thymus starts to produce millions and millions of these T cells. Well, by the time you get, by the time you hit puberty, your body has accumulated so many T cells, which, by the way, have the ability to differentiate. Um, so you don't need to constantly be making new ones. These guys, you've got like stem cells that can, that can continue to make different kinds of T cells. Um, your thymus, like by the time your age, you're like, yeah, my thymus, it doesn't need to work anymore. And so it starts to become non-functional and it just fills in with fat. And I always say, yay, one more place for my body to store fat. That was thymus. And then you may or may not have heard of your spleen. It is um, right side of your abdomen, um, a little bit below your rib cage. Yeah, kind of right at your the bottom of your rib cage. And there's two parts. There's white pulp and red pulp. White pulp is the lymphatic system portion of your spleen. This is where um, a lot of lymphocytes, a lot of those white blood cells live. Red pulp is, um, it contains just a whole bunch of red blood cells. And actually, your spleen will, will filter out any dead red blood cells that you don't need anymore. They'll filter out the iron to use it again. They'll um, recycle parts of it if they can. And your spleen will actually store up to a pint of extra blood just in case you need it. Well, so you may have heard about the spleen maybe in, you know, somebody's uh, ruptured their spleen or they've had to have it removed. Well, the problem is this. If your spleen is ruptured because of this red pulp and you've got such a huge blood supply going into the spleen, um, you could literally bleed to death. So um, if you have a ruptured spleen, they have to rush you to the hospital. And they'll do one of two things. They'll either, if they can, they'll save it. They'll go in and, and sew it up so you're not bleeding internally. Or if it's completely destroyed, they'll just remove it. You can live without your spleen. This is one of those things where you're better off having it, but you can live without it. One of the common times that um, spleens are damaged is during car accidents. Because while, while you're listening to this, pretend like you have your your uh, hands on your steering wheel of your car and let's say your airbags don't go off and your body goes into that steering wheel well a lot of times depending on where you have your steering wheel it hits right where that spleen is and so during car wrecks uh, a lot of times that spleen can be ruptured now when we talk about your body's defense mechanisms your defenses you have both non-specific and specific defenses. So, you know, your body never knows what it's going to come in contact with. And so your body has to have a way to deal with any kind of um, a pathogen, whether it be a bacteria or virus. Um, maybe you went swimming somewhere weird and there's some weird amoebas that you accidentally ingested, things like that. Well, non-specific defenses will um, help destroy anything you come in contact with. And there are actually seven types. And if you take a look, um, all seven of those are listed on page 300. They protect you against any threat. But then you have specific defenses, and that's where the B cells and the T cells come in. B cells and T cells protect you against specific threats because they are going to respond to particular antigens, which are proteins, on the cell membrane of a pathogen. So COVID-19 that has antigens on it. You've probably seen 
um, pictures. I think I've in a couple of the videos I've asked you to watch, there are pictures of a virus with these little things sticking out of it. Those are the antigens, the proteins that say, hi, I'm COVID-19. Well, once your body gets over being infected by that, you build up an immunity to that. Well, that's these B cells and T cells. And so if you ever come in contact with it again, they're going to fight that particular antigen. Um, you guys probably all had chickenpox vaccination. Your generation was lucky. You, you got to have the vaccination. My generation and my kids, we all had to have chickenpox. But once we get it, we're not going to have it again because our body is now building up an immunity to that particular antigen. So I won't get it again. Now this is the last slide and this I like because it kind of gives you an overview of all of your body's defenses and this, this immunity, what we say. Um, and when it comes to specific immunity, you're either some that you're just born with and then there's some that you acquire during your lifetime. So for instance, um, innate, the word innate means born with. Genetically determined, no prior exposure or antibody production involved. Let me give you an example. Um, some of you probably have dogs, and um, one of the vaccinations your dogs gets when it's a puppy is called, uh, it's a vaccination for something called distemper because they can get it and it's, a, it's really a terrible disease for them. Well, I've never gotten a distemper vaccination. You've never gotten a distemper vaccination. And that's because as humans, we are innately immune to that. So there are just certain things that we are born with an immunity to. Um, things that other animals can get an illness from, but we can't. Most of the things you know about your body's immunity come from acquired immunity um, produced by prior exposure or antibody production. And there's active immunity and passive immunity. Active immunity is produced by antibodies that develop in response to antigens. So for instance, my generation, we got chicken pox because we were, uh, we acquired those antigens when we were exposed to somebody with chicken pox in our classroom when we were in the second grade. So a naturally acquired active immunity means my body got those antigens after I came in contact with Susie Smith and then my body build up an immunity to it. Now, that's naturally acquired. Induced active immunity, well, that's what happens when all those vaccinations you get develops after administration of an antigen to prevent a disease. Measles, mumps, rubella, polio, um, chicken pox. Anything that you got a vaccination for, you now have an induced active immunity against that. Now, passive immunity produced by transfer of antibodies from another person. Um, natural passive immunity means that um, this is what you get uh, from your mom. Uh, babies automatically come out with um, some types of immunity that their mother has. Now, that immunity gets bolstered, especially if, if, it is, uh, if that mother breastfeeds. Um, so a lot of things that you're immune to, you got that because your mom was immune to it as well. Now, induced passive immunity means, okay, I've got some kind of infection. How am I going to fight that? Well, this one is not as common. Um, if you get antibodies to combat some infection, what? not an antibiotic, that's different. Um, but this would be like uh, if you got hepatitis and they gave you a gamma globulin um, uh, injection. Gamma globulins are normally produced by your body, but this is a way that your body can fight, help fight a virus. They might give you a booster of that. So these are all just the different types of specific immunities you have. Hope that helps. Um, I'll talk to you on Thursday.